Yes, but if it turns... Are you ready? Okay, you okay. can start because it's red. Okay, okay. Claire Faustine, I'm just interviewing Mama, okay. Okay, so I have a lot of questions to you today. Okay. Introduce yourself to people who do not know you. I, I know am the... Maria Makolilo, the wife of Ernest Makolilo, EBM. Are you used now to <laughs> EBM? No, I know, I hear it, but it's still, it's still really funny to hear people call you EBM. That's just really... I mean, as yes, it is, the Makolilo, when people say, hey, Makolilo. His name is Ernest, or so was he. <laughs> 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 Even like now, it's strange for me because if someone asks, "What's your name?" So, why would Ernest? Should they call Makulu? Should they call EBM? Should you like? And I want you to like because the situations differ from one situation to another. To yeah, yeah. So, uh, you have been American all your life. <laughs> no, my whole life, forty-six years, I've been in America. Yeah. So. For you, at what age did you come to understand this the issue of immigration? Like what like green card lottery, like before meeting me. Did I you know had like a clue. I had no clue. something called like green card lottery or whatever? I've never heard of it. I don't even think most Americans even still have heard of it. Because when I talk to people about what you do, Ernest, they're so interested and I have to say, you know, there's this lottery for the green card and and people in America have no clue. I mean, I'm sure there are people that do, but for the most part, we have no idea. So I only learned when you told me that's what you, you know, and then when our nephew won and then our friends won. And other than that, I'm... So what is your understanding about the green card? Your, uh, just overall, like the difference between the green card and the someone coming for a visit for instance like what is the difference like for you on your case for me no see the problem is is that if i say something wrong no for you you are not me i mean it's yes, your understanding but it could be my opinion okay this is what i understand yeah the difference the main difference between a green card holder and like a visiting visa of any type is a green card holder can work and you don't have a time that you have to leave you you can stay here as long as you want and you can leave and come back and the visa there's no limits because you you're you have a green card it's like permanent visa right yes, exactly so yeah. you can come and go as you please but just like any person that is legally in the united states you have to follow the laws just like the rest of us you know so uh, each year, the Green Card Lottery people do apply in the month of October up to no, beginning of November. And they've already predicted the coming Green Card, whatever. But the results are usually coming in the month of May. That's right. And you're always so busy. October, yeah. well, and before October, you're super busy. And before May, super busy. And then, like, right after, because of the results, you have all these. Yes. For you too. So the issue is let's say uh, someone has won green card uh, lottery and is expecting to come to America. What are the few things you let that person to know these are the things you should do at the beginning will help you to succeed in America and these are the things you have to be careful not to do at the beginning as a new person going to a new country. Well, I think like, one of the biggest things She's just okay. She's Bad, I mean, where well, well, Faustina? Let, let, so let I think here. one of the big things, and it's yeah. not like, is that there's not going to be anyone to help you. Like, there, people aren't waiting for when you come to hand money to you. It's just not. The government's not going to give you money. They're not going to give you a place to stay. They're not going to give you food to eat. And it's just like Americans. I don't. It doesn't matter what you hear or what you say. It, I mean, most people would have to be absolutely destitute. You don't have hardly any money whatsoever. You're behind on all your bills before the government even helps you. And even that, it, it's just, it's never enough to pretty much get past. So you need to have the understanding that when you come to the United States, it's a lot of work. I mean, even if I were to go to a different country, I would be expecting myself to have to work very hard to establish myself in a new country. Um, 
I think for the I think for the most part, people are welcoming of immigrants. I think there are some people that they have a hard time with immigrants and you just ignore them. I mean, honestly, there's nothing you can do to change your mind, so you just ignore them. I mean, you know. But um and if people tell you stuff, you just have to keep going. <laughs> That's the best thing. So, um, but when you start to speak English all the time, it's going to be hard. And don't don't be too upset or stressed or stressed about that because even now I speak with Ernest, and I still have a hard time understanding him, and he has a hard time understanding me because I'm speaking American English. And Ernest learned British English, but it wasn't his first language, where American English is my first language. So I might not be able to explain to you why the words are the way they are, but it just, it is. So um, be patient and um, you know the laws. Uh, I would do it beforehand. I would just, I mean, obviously, it's book knowledge, but at least you would know to know the laws because there's so many little things that can cause problems if you don't know. Uh, and the big cities are very expensive and there's a lot of crime because it's a bigger city. You know, that's just normal. In smaller cities, not going to have as much crime, you know, um, and it's not going to be Hopefully, the smaller city is not as expensive. But, it's just different life, you know, what you want. And so, don't get caught up in, I have to live in New York City, or I have to live in Los Angeles, or I have to live, whatever, like, that's not, at, that's not, I mean, you don't want to live in too small a town where you can't, find work but the big cities have public transportation where you pay to get on a bus you pay to get on a subway smaller cities like where we live there is no bus unfortunately everybody has to have a car and uber and lyft are very expensive and you just can't always use an uber just to go wherever you want it's it's very expensive so it's better to know somebody what before you get here and they can help you. Even if you're just asking someone like my husband, Ernest, about where are some cities where I could find jobs so I could live, and I, but that also might have public transportation or it's not too far to walk and it's safe to walk because just because you live in a certain part of town because it's cheaper, that doesn't mean it's safe. As if you're walking, you don't want to get into trouble. I don't know. What else um, I'm thinking about, you know, eat our, our, our economy right now is inflated, so everything is more expensive. Uh, a dozen eggs, 12 eggs, right, and there uh, are between $5 and $6, it's very, very expensive. Uh, and so everything's risen, and so you have to be very cognizant about that. You have to understand that, and the same goes for rent, where you rent, or, because um, you'd have to have millions of dollars to come here and just buy a house right off the bat, you know. Um, but there's always going to be extra fees everywhere you go. So make sure you have somebody you can trust or some people you can trust who can help you or your family when you're, when, if you, you do win the green card lottery and you're coming here, not that you just come here with a plane ticket. That's you, you, I don't know. What else should I say? No, those are the good, uh, some of the good suggestions. What are the things people should avoid? Like yes. mistakes wise, like I'm giving example. Always listen. I did this. Like I'm giving example. Let's say so on a credit card, you just get the card and you oh, go and yeah. spend it on the movies, whatever, okay. eat whatever you do not understand. What's I going personally on. think that it would probably be in your best interest to not have a credit card right away. But yes, you do need to build some credit, but you need to know the you basics. You need to know under, truly understand a credit card because 
you can, a credit card here, you can just use it depending on the limit they allow you of how much money. Some are 500, some are 1,000, some are 5,000, 10,000, but then you owe all that money back. And they charge you anywhere from up to, 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 to 30 something, I interest. mean, you could go up to 30% interest and that's each month and it keeps getting added. And then the problem is, is that if you don't pay, they have a collection agency that will come in and, and demand your pay. And if you're working, they can take it right from your check. So it, there's a lot of things you need to know. And um, credit cards are for when you're really comfortable and you know the you game of the card. Game, yeah, yeah, that you can pay it off, you know, things like that. I would, you know, and also be aware of this is something simple, but I noticed it um, with a lot of immigrants is that. In the United States, everybody has a refrigerator or they don't buy food <laughs> because nobody eats food that's been sitting out. Our stomachs are very sensitive because we have everything refrigerated or frozen or we cook it right away and then we put it in the refrigerator. Leftovers is a big thing here. Either people eat it or they throw it away. So, so you will see a lot of wasting of food, which is unfortunate, but it's just, I, I'm, I'm not going to say this is that's just how it is um, so I know in Ernest culture they can just put something aside for the next day and eat it whereas here you're gonna get very very sick if you do that and so be aware of that I mean obviously if you have bread you buy that at the store you don't need to put that in the refrigerator and our bread here is full of preservatives it's just the way it is so unless you want to make your own bread this it, it, it's very it's very light and airy um, so uh, just, but be aware that things cost and the, can you talk about the, uh, <laughs> certain kind of areas where there are some free services or free food certain places like pantries okay, whatever so, kind yes. of those like so because we have as immigrants we have the tendency of not asking uh, for help no, apart from asking for help feel that if I go in maybe visit someone's home there is a celebration whatever there is a food oh, can you take a food home it's bad behavior to do to take the food or to go there is a certain thing they, they give for free I don't want to take for free or someone has used some clothing they want to give to you like for your child our countries we don't have that much of the behavior okay so How here is in the United experience? States there are um, a lot of nonprofits where people will give you free things depending on where you live or what you need you just have to look up like a food pantry or uh, clothe I don't know the clothing you know free clothing you just have to ask around usually it's the churches sometimes there's schools that do it or other organizations but usually it's through churches uh, unless it's a really big city there's not going to be a huge mosque uh, and the same would go for big Jewish temples or big Catholic cathedrals or Christian cathedrals of any type usually in the smaller cities it's just everything's smaller uh, but that doesn't mean that they won't help and so you you know you don't be afraid to ask. It's worse to not ask and then suffer than, and be, and so it's worse, you know, if you ask and you're told no, you're told no and, you know, but you at least asked. Um, there are places that have, like, say, every three weeks they have a food pantry where you can go and they will give you some canned foods that have, like, vegetables or beans, um, some dry pasta, or um, some fresh vegetables, and now it might not even be what you want. Um, again, American cuisine, food is very different from other places, uh, but it's a good idea if you need help to, to inquire around. Uh, the worst thing you can be told is no. 
And if like someone has a baby, for instance, because there are some immigrants who are winners of the DV lottery are coming here, baby. and then there is winter clothing, there is summer, whatever. Yes. But so. the behavior, tendency of someone can be a neighbor or a friend. Oh, we have the children they give for free, those kind of things, not to feel bad because that is right. normal. It's not that they disrespect you. It's, a, it's kind of you just have to be able to feel you can okay say you have neighbors or you see people and you ask them that's fine but you never want to insist on having someone help you yeah um, but there are places that you can get I mean there are people that will give you clothes or you know if you and, and things like that and I'm trying to think um, there are places that will have diapers, but you're not going to ever get enough diapers where you don't know, need to go buy diapers. There, we call them diaper banks, like where you put in money, but it's different. It's a diaper bank. Basically, you get free diapers, but they may not be the ones you like and or the ones that your baby the is okay size, with yeah. or the size, you know. So be prepared that diapers are something expensive here. And if you have cloth diapers... It's, it, I guess if you're already doing it in your home, then you can do it here. Um, but you have to be careful of the plumbing. Plumbing is a big thing. You can't just wash anything down down the pl the, pl the pipes. Same goes for food. You can't just throw food down the pipes. It, in the end, it will ruin the pipes. And uh, so you have to be very careful. I just think that a lot of nonprofits um, just ask around and, and and talk to people. I mean, you could be in the grocery store and and meet somebody and say, "Do you know about any nonprofits in the area?" Or maybe go to the park and you meet somebody and you can ask them there. Or and our parks here, for the most part, are free. And you can just go and your children can play and you can sit on the grass and you know it's. But always be mindful and respectful that other people are there too. That's, yeah. a, that's an important thing. We're all sharing it. The other thing is, uh, you have been trans in Tanzania two times. Yes, one 13 years ago and one one year ago. Yes. So if you look back after you are both visiting, especially the most recent one, whatever, or plus meeting a lot of immigrants from other countries, especially from Tanzania. Mm -hmm. What are the qualities you see from immigrants from East Africa or from Africa in general? You see to be, once a, yes, it's hard, but it is easier to succeed here if they take certain kind of their principles and they apply in American life. Because I do think that immigrants on a whole work harder. And um, I, I don't think that, I, I do, how do I say this? Americans can work very, very hard, but some Americans get, and I think that, I don't think it's just Americans. I think it's people in general. Some people can get lazy, but if you really want to succeed here, you will work hard and you will, and you will, you can survive. It takes a long time, even for an American to get a lot of money and have a home because here we 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 have mortgages on homes, but they're still pretty expensive. And um, but working hard, being respectful of everyone around you, and not trying don't care what how others perceive you. Like it doesn't matter whether people see you as rich or poor. It doesn't matter if people see you as famous or not it does not matter you need to do what you need to do for your family and that's important take care of your children take care of your family um, I think it it's also important to understand here that it's very easy to get arrested for hitting your spouse or your children you can still um, spank them I don't know. Them. you can spank them but you cannot which like how we used beat. to be beaten yeah. back in you our can't days do that. Yeah. and you cannot hit your spouse at all whether a woman or a man you can
cannot do that. Not here. Uh, it should be done anyway, but you cannot do that here. You will be arrested. And you don't want to end up in jail. Um, I don't know. Uh, but there is a lot of opportunity. There are a lot of jobs that people don't want. That if you work hard, you can save up a lot of money. And you don't have to have the best apartment or the, you know, the best clothes. You just do what you can. Especially here, you wear jeans or whatever. You go to work. Most of the job is not that they dress up like how we do in Africa with a tie, whatever. Like we are going to normal. I mean, unless it depends on the job. But majority of the jobs, they, you wear casual. Mm -hmm. Majority of the jobs. So, what is your last thing or last? advice prayer whatever it is for people who are waiting for the results coming up and whether they win or they don't win for the upcoming application what is your last advice to them that's a hard one but i think that um stay hopeful and know that god has a plan and whether you're that means you win the lottery now or later or not at all um there is a there is a plan and god's plan is always the best even when we can't see it uh you know ernest and i and our children and our family we we haven't had it easy but and i'm american <laughs> uh, my parents didn't have it easy they were american their parents before them they lived during the great depression not everybody has a lot of money, but we still somehow find a way to have an, uh, a nice life. It doesn't have to be, you know, we have everything. You don't need everything, but um, you have to come here with the understanding that you're starting uh, and you can build from there. So be hopeful and make sure you do what you're supposed to do and if you don't get the green card lottery this time maybe you'll get it next time and because it truly is just a lottery there's nobody nobody is picking you out of picking up you know like names and saying i well i want this person instead of that person it's just a computer drawing out numbers and that's how they pick them there's no human involved so and make sure you do all the right things at the interview if you do win um and just do the best you can and if you really feel like you can make it here in the United States keep going with the lottery but if you're happy where you're at if you you know that's okay too there's nothing you don't have to come here it's great I mean but your country might be great too so it all depends on what you really need in your life so stay hopeful that's my, stay hopeful thank you so much you're welcome bye bye <laughs>